Okay, uh, not everything here is just happening in a vacuum. This is about a week after uh, the previous shot. So uh, I cleaned in my tanks. As you can see, I have actually swept. You can see all the way to the other side here now. Got two tanks missing here. And I do need to do a water change on this tank here. But as you can see, big, big difference here in case you guys caught it on the filterless tank with some tangerines in there making some babies for me still. If, if you caught that in the last video, you'll see how murky green it was looking and very, uh, very dense with a lot of duckweed and all that. And skimmed most of that out. Did a little water change action. This is a uh, some new, a new addition, not new, but a resupply of some crushed oyster shell, which is great for live bearers, by the way, you know, uh, keeps, keeps their bone density healthy because they do give birth to live babies, takes a lot of calcium away. All right, enough of that. As you can see, it's clear, got the heaters have gone right now, but the room is very warm it's probably about 78 in here sorry for the glare uh, added a few extra uh, hang on back filters uh, just where I could put them on the tanks that are left over water changes all around here uh, you might see a little bit of cloudiness like I said I added some crushed coral I don't think I've really given you guys a good look here on some of the uh, condensed things that have gone on. Grammys, rainbows, Australian rainbows. Not everything is live, some things, some decor I just threw in here. Quarry cats. Lots of extra sponges that I wanted to keep going, obviously. More on those guys later. been happening here these are where most of my garamis are at and some uh, Siamese algae eaters there in the back or a sun a Siamese algae eater for those of you that be keeping up that's the tangerine sword man he looks cool doesn't he high fin sword he actually jumped Got lucky, I had a little opening back here. Sorry for the uh, recap, but I had a little opening back here on this glass right in here. And uh, the tank was actually over here on this side. And he jumped and must have fallen in between, all the way down into between the gaps of these boards. And just landed right through here. And so now he's in here with all the karamis. Kind of cool. Again, I posed the question, did he do it? Did he really shoot the moon? Or did he really jump out of that tank all the way over here? I don't think so. He's a small fish, but I don't know. And somehow just kind of bump bounced in. I'll never know. Like I said in the last video where I was talking about that. Again, some cloudiness here on my uh, Goudier Lion's eye. Yeah, I know, I haven't forgotten. I need to do a species profile on these guys. Very prolific. I started out with three. 
I've sold many off of Aquavid uh, about a year ago, and then I had to just kind of uh, stop because I was getting was getting pretty thin on stock. But so happy I could get these guys into other homes. Probably still on the careless list. Probably not going to go off the careless list. It will end up being extinct in the wild. The males are the colorful ones. This crypt's kind of melting back. Again, this is very cloudy because uh, a lot of soot in there. Uh, the soot cleared up and then I went ahead and poured in some crushed coral. Because again, these guys are wild type live bearers. So I put some new crushed coral in here and that's why it's a little smoky or foggy. So, all right, so I've got all this down. Plenty of filtration on all my tanks, thanks to the uh, breaking down of about 12 tanks. I had, uh, for a review, for those of you that uh, don't know, or just, this is the first video of uh, 210 Aquatics that you're checking out. Let me come back around here on this fish room. This is a breaking down of a fish room, slowly. It can't happen overnight. There's just way too many things going on. I had a 10 gallon right here. I had a 20 long going across here. I had a 20 high here. I had a 20 long tank here with a 20 long right here in this area. And just underneath that, I had a 20 high sitting there. Also here, I had another stand right here actually, that's right, I did get rid of the, um, I had a, like a, what I like to call my Mayan Pleco tank, let me close this because it's just a closet, and as you can see this door got dirty just uh, if I was doing water changes or if I had some water evaporation coming off, and so a lot of the splashback from water changes or when the water evaporation was so low that it was making a splash, obviously, and so this is the, this is the effects or the results of that over time. But anyhow, I did have a tank here. There's a 20 long stand here and underneath that another 20 high. Again, this fish room I was using for breeding projects. It's my 55, like I said, uh, this is uh, where all my angels are at right now. At least every angel that I decided I wanted to keep is in here now. And they're awesome. So we're gonna do right by them as well. So again, uh, stay tuned here. We've got more to show you. Let's go see all the tanks outside. No judging, please. My patio is a complete disaster right now. Seems like it's always in that state. It's just one, two, three tanks sitting up there on the, someday will be a bar. 20 high right there, 20 high and a 10 right there. Substrate still hasn't fallen down to the bottom. This was a 39 high. I had this in my living room and I'm just, it's really a tank that belongs in a fish room for projects. It's really not a display tank. It's beautiful when it's full, but there's a lot of scratches on it. Another 20 long here. In fact, I've got two of them right here and another 20 high. So that's three right there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stay tuned. Okay, back inside here in the closet where uh, I had a ten and that five and a half are sitting right in here. It's always good to save these cans, whatever, or these glass jars with the top. The jars are awesome. Uh, my plan was to keep these jars and then once my vinegar eel culture was ready to go, I could sell vinegar eels uh, as a source of live food for uh, anybody who's breeding and has some very very small fry. So uh, what am I going to do with the room? As I'm starting to see it all clear out a little bit and that means I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got eight tanks running now instead of about 20. I need to do something. Uh, if I'm gonna move these fish and I'm gonna move these tanks, that means the water has to come out, obviously, and perhaps even the gravel for me to move these tanks. And the fish gotta go somewhere. So I need to start thinking, what am I going to do in this room and what other tank am I gonna use 
to set these fish up. And it may be a one tank somewhere else in the house and a new tank, you know, or a used tank or something, but I've got to figure it out. I really don't have an answer yet. I just know that another tank has to be set up somewhere else, water in it, uh, and put some fish in so I can break down one of these tanks and get it off. I'd like to have this in my living room. Originally, I was thinking I was gonna go with like a 100, 125 gallon tank. I'm still considering that, but it's all the work, guys. It's a lot of work. This room I originally painted uh, at the risk of sounding like a, a room makeover. <laughs> it's not, you know, but I did originally paint this room for the fish room, but I didn't know it was gonna become a fish room. I just thought it was gonna be a cool ass room. I painted it gray and I was gonna have some tanks along the wall or part of the wall and then maybe have a TV up here or up here with a nice lazy boy couch or some sort of kind of make it like a movie room with a real nice environment. And then I got sucked in. It can happen. And it did happen. It happened to me. Thanks for staying till the end. 210 Aquatics. We'll see you in the next one.